I am going to record this. So just know um, that I record it as we go. Um, the first thing I'm going to do before we draw anything on this canvas is I'm going to get some yellow. Um, and you can use bright yellow or I've got this kind of like ochre yellow and just a little bit of orange. And I am going to get this background painted. So I'm going to use a nice big brush to do that. I like to use a flat. Uh, you can use any brush that you're comfortable with. Now I am working on paper here. So I am just going to just to keep this moving nice and smooth. I'm going to add just a little water to my paper because the paper is so absorbent. If you're painting on canvas, you do not need to do that. I just do this to help um, curb some of that absorbency of the paper. All right, so I've got um, right here kind of three parts yellow and one part orange. Um, and I'm just going to dip in both. I'm not really going to mix them because they'll mix on the canvas. And I'm just going to paint this whole background. Just letting the paint leave strokes and brush marks. I just want to get this kind of all cut up, covered up and ready to go. And if you do not have the tracer on there, um, if you've got the tracer, um, I would encourage you just paint over it and we'll work on this. Um, we'll work on drawing most of this together. But if you struggle, you would use the tracer a little bit later to add the trees and such. This is just kind of getting a nice clean background layer on there. And it's streaky. I really kind of prefer it that way. So don't feel like you have to overmix anything. I think the painterly lines make it look a little more special. Make it look like a painting. Just want to give the impression here of some mountains. Um, so I'm not too worried about everything being hyper realistic. And I know we may all be working on different sizes, so I'm going to move nice and slowly so that everybody has time. All right, if you're still working on your background, keep working. I am going to get ready for my sky here. And so for the sky, I am going to take some blue. I'm 
equal part of white. And then maybe just a smidge of green. And I am going to mix those all together. I'm going to move down a size to the brush. I'm going to use a medium sized brush for this. And I'm just going to get a nice light sky color. And then you can kind of use your own judgment for this. This was a little darker than I had envisioned. So I'm going to throw some more white in there. Now this is where I am going to draw in um, my mountain line. And so I'm going to choose a place for my mountains to stop over here. And a place where my mountains start over here. I want most of my background to be dry. So if you need to take another minute before you do this, that's absolutely fine. And then I'm just going to connect these by kind of going up and down. It does not have to be an even skyline. And then I'm going to paint all the way across this top sky here because I want it to be nice and wet with paint so I can blend in some colors. Some of your orange or your yellow, your yellow orange sky may show through. That is absolutely okay, because we're gonna mix in some colors. Um, we want this to look kind of like a morning sunrise or a sunset where there's just a lot of fun, beautiful colors in the sky. So lay down a nice thick coat of this light blue. Right here is where we determine what your mountain line is going to look like. All, right. All my paint here is still wet. I am going to just take a bit of white on a small brush. I've got a small flat here and I'm just going to Swoop in some white right into this wet paint. And then I'll come back and mix it in a little bit. I'm just kind of changing the angle right here. Like there's kind of an upsweep in my sky. Adding some white right on the mountain line. I want to mix it in a little bit with this blue. If your paint's really wet, it might mix well. If not, you might add just a touch of blue here and there. going to add this little prop back here just to change the angle ever so slightly. My camera is having trouble focusing today, I think, because the paint is so shiny. All right, and for the upper part of the sky, we are going to blend in some pink. 
And then we are gonna blend in some of the darker blue. So I'm gonna put some of that on my palette. So I'm gonna get a little bit of pink on my brush here. And we want kind of just a subtle appearance of clouds. So I'm gonna put kind of just tapping in some pink up here at the top, little by little. I'm gonna come back over this. So I do not need this to look perfect right now. I'm just tapping it in with my brush. So I've got my pink on there and then I'm just gonna add in just a very small amount of this darker blue. Once I get the paint on there, I'm gonna come back and just tap, tap, tap and blend. And this is allowing some of that orange to pull up some of that blue and pink to mix together. So in areas, if it over blends, you can tap in more color. Like I feel like I lost some of that pink. So just gonna tap in a little bit of that pink, but I'm using the wide side of the brush. I'm using this whole side of the brush to tap. I am just going to take a second here. Let me adjust my camera because it is just having the worst time focusing. And it's driving me crazy. So I know it's probably driving you crazy. So just tap in some color, tap and blend. Until you're happy with it. Your sky can be as bright or as subtle as you want it to be. And so adjust your sky however you need to. I'm just going to add in a little more blue, a little more blue wisp at the bottom. That is totally up to you.
camera are going to fight tonight. Here we go. I think that's better. All right. So for the next part, uh, we are going to draw in some trees. Um, Part of the reason why we did this yellow orange is because that is um, going to be the first background for our trees. So if you have not already traced your trees on, um, basically what we need is two rows of trees. So I'm gonna start by just drawing in just the center line of my trees here. We're gonna have kind of two rows. So. In the front here, they're gonna be bigger. And then of course the trees in the back are going to appear a little bit smaller. So these are just trunks. They don't have to be perfect. This is just where we're gonna place our trees. You, you don't have to do this in pencil. You could do this in paint. I mean, we're gonna paint over it. It's just, this is just helping us place our trees. And then what I'm going to do is just start by making the outline here. And the trees in the sample, I compare them, I don't know, they're, I call them my finger trees because um, they just remind me of kind of splayed out fingers. So um, I just kind of make these weird round shapes. And those end up being my trees. So they don't have to be perfect. The only pointer I would have is that you make them wider at the bottom than you do at the top. I don't know why I'm erasing because all of this gets covered in paint anyway. So in this early stage, these trees really look um, very amateur. That's okay. If you feel if you feel like your trees look like a first grader made them, that's kind of what we're going for here. They're just very loose, almost leaf-like shapes. And here in the back, um, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to start with the trees that I want to be larger and um, seem like they are more in front. So I'm going to do those trees first. And then as I work, up my row of trees. I'm going to make sure that these trees go behind the trees that I just made. Oh, 
we're just sketching these on. It does not have to be perfect because anything we do can be fixed with the paint. Now for the next step, I'm going to use this bright blue right out of the bottle. And we are going to get some color on these mountains. Um, let's see, I am going to use kind of a small to medium round brush here uh, because uh, what you're going to want to do is, um, I might need another tree here. I'm feeling one more, one more tree to fill up this space. All right, what we're gonna do is fill in the blue color of our mountains, but we are gonna go around the edges of these trees. So this is also a time where you can fix some of these edges if you're not crazy about them. And we are gonna take this color right up to the edge of that mountain line. And we are just going from the top row of trees up. So I can kind of, I think I'll stop here. You definitely want to give your your bottom of your trees just pick a place where you want this blue your blue mountains to stop so all of this all of this and i'm using blue because this i'm i'm going to have these blue mountains if you cho are choosing a different color for your mountains use that color now And this part takes some time because we're going in and out of all these little nooks and crannies. And if you can see little traces of your yellow through the blue, we want to cover up as much of that as we can, but I'm not too worried about it because we are adding more layers onto our mountains.
In some of these areas where the trees do not overlap, it might be confusing um, where you have your, the, your, your bottom of the blue. Um, but just choose a place close to the bottom of the tree line. Um, as we add color, we're gonna fill some of that in, so. You might be asking yourself as you're going in and out of all these little nooks and crannies, why, why don't we just paint our trees on top of the mountains? Um, typically when we paint with acrylic paint, we paint in layers. So you would paint all of your background first and then you would add um, more and more layers on top versus creating an outline and going around each little piece. Um, this design here is actually um, a deco art social artworking design, um, which is one I've used for in person paint parties um, a few times. And I thought the methodology behind this was kind of different from what I was used to, but I was really happy with. Um, how it turned out. It just made me look at the painting in a different way than I would typically. So after I did it once and I was happy with the result, it made a little more sense to me.
question. I'll let mine sit for a minute so that I can make sure that everybody has time to catch up. Once you get your mountains all um, the solid color blue, uh, what we're going to do at this point is we are going to mix um, some of this bright blue with just the tiniest bit of black. And I am very sparing with black because black pigment is very, very strong. So I just want to darken this up and create just a nice rich navy blue. If you've got navy blue already mixed in a bottle, that is absolutely fine as well. And what I'm going to do, um, and I'm going very abstract with this painting, so I'm not creating the shape of trees, but I'm just going to add kind of some dark trees in my background here. Um, they would be the trees far off in the distance on the side of the mountain. So I'm just tapping in kind of patches of this navy blue color. And I'm not doing it all over the bottom. I'm just going to kind of add it maybe in the shadowy areas of the mountains. But just to create some depth with the color here. And I'm just, um, this is just a round brush and I'm just kind of making short, um, short little brush strokes. These are your trees, so you can decide where they are on your mountains. Once I get kind of a nice single layer of that uh, navy set of trees, I'm just going to go 
maybe one or two shades darker, one or two shades closer to black here. And I'm just gonna come up right over the top and I'm gonna do just a few. I don't wanna make quite as many of these really dark trees, but I just wanna add some variation of the blue, variation in color in this tree line. Sure, so I had a request to wait just a few minutes. That is absolutely fine. I did feel like I was working a little quickly. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a minute, let this, um, let the blue in the mountains dry. Um, so what we did was um, we added the, the blue right out of the bottle, a nice bright blue. Um, onto this mountain line. And then I mixed up um, a little bit of black with that bright blue and made a navy. I added some speckled trees in my mountain line. And then I added um, another shade darker, um, kind of in between navy and black. And I added just a few more trees in that tree line. So um, we will do that. And actually now's a good time. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to call a five minute break so that um, I know we're all on the same page. So if you are finished, take a break, um, grab a drink, go to the bathroom, stretch, whatever you need to do. Um, I'll wait about five minutes. And then when we get back from that five minute break, um, I'm going to add some highlights into the mountains. And then we are going to add some color to our trees. Um, I will be here during the break. If you have questions, just let me know in the chat. Um, otherwise, let's see, I don't have a clock in here. What is my problem? I'm on full screen. There we go. Okay. I've got, um, it's 52 after the hour of my time. So, um, we'll come back at 56, 57 ish.
All right, I am back from break. And we are going to work on some highlights and some shadows on those mountains. I'm going to clean my paintbrushes first. I don't know if you guys are the same way. I'm absolutely the worst about leaving my paintbrushes in the water all the time. Just fine to do here and there, but I do it like overnight and I need to quit doing that because I wreck a lot of paintbrushes that way. All right, so we're gonna go back to the mountains and uh, we added in some trees or some impressions of trees back there. And <clears throat> excuse me, what I wanna do now um, is I'm gonna add some highlights and some shadows. So just to get um, some blendability, I don't know if that's the right word, if I just made that up. Um, I'm gonna use that bright blue right out of the bottle and I'm gonna just add a little bit of paint up at the top. Um, not for any aesthetic reasons, um, but that way it allows us to blend in some color. So just kind of right along the edge there, just kind of re-wetting these mountains with a little bit of paint. And then we're gonna need some white. Now I'm using my baby flat brush. Uh, you can use a round brush for this as well. We're just kind of adding in a little bit of color. So um, just add some white onto your brush and you wanna pick a side to have your light come from. So my light, I'm gonna pretend my light source is up here on the left, shining in. You can have it on either side, but you just wanna stay consistent with it. So um, if my light is over here, I'm just going to kind of add in some streaks and you'll see with that blue, having added that blue on there, it just kind of mixes and blends in. So I am just um, on the side of my mountain, I'm just making kind of short choppy strokes. If some blue is not blending in there, you can always just add a little bit. There's no right or wrong to this. If you have more white, maybe your mountains just have a little more snow. If you go too heavy on the white, it's okay just to take some of that blue and kind of mix it out there. If your paint dried a little on you, that happens. I tend to work um, the most frequently with these craft paints. Um, and so they dry quicker on me. I like that they dry quickly because I can move through layers quickly um, as opposed to um, maybe some of the artist quality tube paints. I do use them. I've got, you know, these paints right here um, are just as good for a painting like this. They just tend to dry a little slower and they're a little thicker. Um, so I usually go for my deco art paint or folk art is another good brand really doesn't matter the brand, um, but this craft paint is just a little thinner and it dries quicker. That's what I was getting at. <laughs> All right, so I've got my shadow. Um, I want to use some navy and, uh, or I've got, I've got, I'm sorry, I've got my highlight. Now I'm going to use some navy um, and create a shadow. And it doesn't have to be really dark. Like I might not use that dark color I mixed up earlier, but just, just want it to be a little different from that bright blue. You don't even have to use black to mix. I could have used a little bit of that green. Either way, you just wanna create just a little bit of a darker color. I just like to add that kind of on the dark side of that mountain there. 
you can add as much or as little shadow as you want, but it would go on the opposite side of the mountain as the highlight. Just kind of wherever that shadow would fall. That just adds a little depth to your mountain. So lights and darks is what we were going for. And if you add too much of the light, just go back to your color right out of the bottle and just blend some of that in to tone it down. If you add too much of your dark, um, add some of that color right out of the bottle and tone it down. Once you're happy with your mountains, we are going to move into these trees. Um, and this is where that, that orangey yellow background comes in first. Um, so we are going to move from the outside of the tree in, creating darker and darker shades as we go. So uh, find a clean spot on your palette there. Um, I've already got excuse me, I got my yellow applied, right? We mixed that and we um, painted that on the background. So my first color is going to be just the straight up orange. Um, and I would recommend, we're gonna do a lot of blending. So use a nice clean area of your palette. This is all dry here. So I'm just gonna use orange right out of that bottle. And I'm going to come into these trees. Let's see, I'm going to use my round brush. It's kind of a medium sized round brush. And so, what I'm going to do is in all of my trees, I'm going to show you on one of the bigger ones here. So, this is looking a little yellow, but I promise on my end it's orange. So, I'm not going right up to that outline. I am going to leave a little bit of edge. And then add some of this orange towards the middle. So I want that yellow to show and I want the inside of my tree to be completely orange here. And I will lift this. I think you can see it. And I'll lift it up a little bit too so it's clear what I mean. So I'm not going all the way to my, my edge of my tree. I'm leaving an outline of that yellow. I'm 
And we are gonna add several layers into these trees, getting darker and darker each time. And this is not something you have to be super exact with. We are just adding a layer of color here. As we get darker and darker, we are going to fill in a lot of those shadow areas. So a lot of this big open space is going to become dark area.
So take your time filling in that orange of your trees. The next step is just to mix in um, a little bit of your pink and that should make the color a little more red orange ish. Pinkish orange, reddish orange. And then off to the side, I'm going to add some green. Little by little, we're going to add some of that green in there. We'll need some black as well. All right, so get your first layer of orange in there. Um, if you've got a pre-mixed, like a reddish orange, you can use that, or um, you can just add some of your pink to your orange, and that should make the tone a little bit deeper. Um, if you wanna darken it just a smidge, you can add in a touch of green, um, green and orange. It'll turn kind of a brownish color, so. Um, we're just going for a shade darker, right? And then we're going to add this orangey red color in there. And as I mix in these middle layers, I'm going to be a little more loose with the shape. And I'm just going to kind of brush it in little by little. If your darker colors are not the same as mine, that is absolutely okay. Um, the idea is really just to get darker. Um, so I had yellow, orange, now I've got this reddish orange. We're just filling in these tree shapes, getting darker and darker as we go, each time allowing some of those lighter colors to peek out on the edges. And with each darker shade, I just get a little looser with my painting and less worried about the shape.
So on our trees, we started with yellow, we added orange, and then we added reddish orange. Um, and next we are gonna add brown. And then the final step for the trees is to add touches of black. So um, to make a brown here, um, you can make brown using opposite colors on the color wheel. So if I add blue to the orange, it's gonna make brown. If I add green to the orange, it's gonna be greenish brownish. Um, so I'm gonna try a little green here first. Let's see, now my green is a dark green. If you have a light green, it might not um, end up as dark as you would like it. So try adding green or blue to your orange. If you are not a color mixer and you have a brown right out of the bottle, that is fine too. We're going for kind of an orangey brown. Mine's not nearly going dark enough, so I'm gonna add a little bit of black. I think this color works. I don't want it to be too dark, um, but I do want it to be darker on the darker side. Yeah, so mine's more like a gray brown. Um, but that will work. All right, so this time, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to go through, same as I did before with all my trees, just adding kind of a thin, wispy tree right down the center of this reddish orange tree. And then this brown is going to become the shadow all around the bottom.
And if you get a little confused where to add this brown shadow, you can just do all the centers of your trees first and then come back and look and see where you need to fill in. Sometimes it does get a little confusing. There really is no right or wrong because we just made up these tree shapes. These trees may or may not really exist somewhere in the world, that's okay. So once I've got my brown in there, um, as and this is like the shadow of the tree. So this is um, if the light were on the opposite side of the tree and all you kind of see is kind of that halo. And on our side of the tree, it's shadowed. So um, I've got the shadows on the tree and now I can come back in here and fill in all of this area with shadow. And as you go around this halo of your tree, which is just the kind of that yellow inside color, you can touch up your edges, just make them nice and smooth. I drew mine with pencil, so I'm just making sure I go over the pencil line with my brown.
I really wouldn't worry too much as you're going through and adding in all these dark areas and dark shadows. Don't worry too much about making an accident because sometimes just shadows fall in weird ways. So just go with it. I have spent uh, many years, many, many years learning how to paint. And um, I can tell you by far the hardest thing about painting is learning how to let go. Once you try um, to start making realistic pieces, it's really hard um, to teach your brain to just kind of let loose and make those more whimsical and abstract pieces because We always go back to per trying to make everything perfect. But trees aren't perfect. And this painting isn't perfect. This painting is just for fun. It's just to kind of give us those autumn vibes. So adding in the shadows is probably the part that takes the longest. So after this, what we'll do, we just add in um, quite a bit less, but we're gonna go after this and add in some, some black to the shadows. And then we're gonna add some final touches. You might need to go down a size in your brush as you get to these smaller areas. I think I'm going to go down to my baby brush, my baby round brush here as I work into some of these finer details.
Now this part of the painting definitely takes the longest, getting these dark shadows in there. And once I get all this brown in there, I am going to add a scoop of black right into that brown. And I'm going to make my darkest shadow. I want this color to be almost black. And for this step, I'm just going to get some paintbrush on or some paint on my paintbrush and kind of just lightly add in the darkest color around the bottom in the largest areas for sure. And I just tap in the color and kind of swish it around. I don't want these to be exact brush strokes. I just kind of want them to move and blend in. At this point, most of this brown color is dry. You can add as much or as little of this darkness as you want. This really dark brown. There's no right or wrong. If you like your trees a little browner, a little less shadowed, that is okay. And there's no right or wrong with this. I'm just blending it into these large patches of brown areas. You can add some into your trees. The idea here is just to make areas where the shadow is darker and deeper than other areas.
Now after the black, everything that we do is just finishing touches and your finishing touches are gonna be very different from my finishing touches because we're gonna just adjust those things um, that sticks out to our eye. So um, I'll give you some examples. I'll just walk you through some of the things that I would do for finishing touches on my piece. Um, I would go back to my original yellow here. Um, and you can take that and just add um, any highlights or clean lines that you want on your trees. So if there's any places where you feel like the shape of the tree is just a little weird, or maybe you just need to hide some pencil, you don't wanna see the brown. Um, this is one of the finishing touches that you could do. Just add some highlight with that yellow to the very edges of your trees. And this, when I say finishing touches, it's all optional. So do the things that you want to do to make your painting stand out, to make it your own. Um, another thing that you could do, um, and I'm pretty happy with the way my, my mountains turned out, um, but you could always go in and you could add just a nice clean edge to your mountains if you need to add um, or fix any of the highlights or low lights, shadows in your mountain line, you could do that. Totally up to you. Another thing you could do um, is kind of play with your clouds a little bit. You could add a second layer um, in that cloudy area, which I might actually do. I'll, I'll do just to show you. Um, so for clouds, I like to use a dry brush technique. Um, so I'm just gonna add some pink to my brush, take it off and then maybe just kind of swirl some color up here. Um, make it where maybe another layer of cloud. Now that this is dry, I can kind of brush in some brightness or tone it down or you could add more blue, you could add more white to your sky. So that's another example of um, a touch up that could be done. So if you wanna add in maybe some white wispies I'm even someone who is very um, partial to glitter. I love glitter. I'm not sure where I would put, put glitter in this picture. <laughs> um, but when we work on these finishing touches, that's where um, I want you to use your eye and say, what looks a little off to me? Or what could I do to make this painting mine? So don't be afraid to just go back and add in those 
fun little details. And then one tip or pointer I like to give out um, to anybody who paints with me. Um, first of all, remember, uh, this was not meant to be a realistic painting, right? Like we're supposed to look at this and just get fall mountain vibes. Um, this was not something realistic enough where we were gonna look in and see little people and houses in the background. Um, so go easy on yourself. Um, with that being said, uh, recognize too that um, when you're working on a piece, you're right on top of it, uh, right in front of it. Everything looks better from two to three feet away. Take a step back um, and look at it from a different perspective. Anytime you're working on something, you always are gonna be more critical. Um, in those moments than you are later. Um, so I guarantee you tomorrow when you look at your painting, you're little, gonna like it even better um, because you're not gonna be looking at it with that analytical critical eye. And um, don't be afraid to step back. Sometimes we just need to step away too. So if you haven't gotten up from your seat, <laughs> Um, when you finish painting, after you clean up, just walk away for a few minutes and then take a look at it again before you go to bed. You'll look at it totally differently um, than you did when you were painting it. Um, so go ahead and work on those finishing touches. Um, I would love to see, see, I feel myself getting crazy with the ums. Sometimes I say um way too much. I'm going to put uh, link where you can share your work. Um, I've got two groups that I'm a part of. I have one called Mixed Media Crazy and another called uh, Online Paint Night. So I'm going to share those links. You can share this in either of those groups. I would love to see what you made. Let me find that other link here. All right, so there are my two links. Also, uh, if you are still working or want to rework this or want to do this again with your kids or with a friend or whatever, um, I will send out the um, recording. I upload these onto Zoom, or I'm sorry, I upload these from Zoom onto YouTube. Um, that does sometimes take me 24 hours uh, just because it has to process when I download it from Zoom and then process again um, when I upload it. But I will send that link to you by email sometime this weekend. Um, if it's not tomorrow, I will get that to you on Sunday. And uh, I will also throw the links to the groups in there so that you can share your work. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. Let me switch my camera real quick. Here I am. Hello. Um, so here's mine from farther away. As you can see, even uh, holding it up uh, gives you a different perspective than showing you on the camera. So um, definitely take a look at your piece from a few feet away. Take a picture, share it with me. I love seeing everybody's work. That's my favorite, absolute favorite part 
of teaching um, when I had to make the difficult decision to stop doing in-person parties and do them online. That was the hardest part is that I couldn't see everybody's beautiful work. So definitely share that with me. Um, I will send a thank you email out um, hopefully on Sunday with the links to the groups and uh, the link to the replay if you would like to see that. And um, I just want to say thank you. I do a $5 Friday every month. Um, I should know this off the top of my head, but I do not. Let me check real quick. My December $5 Friday paint party is a snowman snow globe. So he has lots of fun. Um, that happens on December 17th. I'd love to have you back. Uh, so thank you for joining me, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye-bye.